Hello and welcome back to Vampire or Vampire. Depending on how you pronounce it, we are back with the game where it's good that I suck at it because we are a vampire and we have to find out who did this to us, who turned us into a vampire, who caused us to kill our sister. Yeah, that happened. And we have a lead, at least someone is killing people and sucking them, them dry of blood. And uh, last time we talked to a few people, we got a few hints and now we need to talk to some more. Let's get out, see if we can find out more. Obviously, we're still in London. I will get to the bottom of this intrigue. What's been done to me, to this city? War munitions volunteers. Britons working together. Skilled workers in engineering and kindred trades. And roll today as war munition volunteers. Support the man at the front with a plentiful supply of munition. You will not suffer in wages. Get into the factory line and feed the firing line. I think uh, this uh, it's playing in 1918, so we're at the tail end of World War One. Look around a little bit in our vampire vision. Last hint that we got was to talk to someone at the docks. Okay, here we have some blood. The body is still warm. This man has just been drained of blood. Uh, let's examine the outfit. This first. man was armed. He tried to defend himself. What about the this wounds? corpse has been dried of its blood, just like the previous victim. Also looks pretty mangled. What's this? Some sort of note. Prison orders. Object. Multiple death in the docks region. We believe a nasty leech is involved. Locate the beast. Purge it and quickly. Warning. According to recent reports, this vampire is very violent. Approach with extreme caution. I know we like men in this part of town, but don't send rookies to investigate the case. If I'm correct, we've got a frenzied one killing each other. Killing each night. As always, search abandoned places first, first, like old houses, basements, sewers, or warehouses. Destroy the leech, brothers. These okay, men, so these are the vampire hunters. They're a yeah. company of professional vampire hunters. Yeah. Blood and empty gin bottles. This bishop fellow is something of a heavy drinker. Uh, or was. <laughs> there are blood splats on oh, the no. other side of the canal. I must reach that barge. I wanted to. Uh, can I? Can I go back? I wanted to investigate the boat. Ah, it's all that too late. It's over there. Jump over here. I have to be careful. I would assume. Western docks stable. Okay. Driven gunner. Oh, that's not good. Okay, we have some vampire hunters there. Okay, so we have some stealth. I like it. Over there! That went pretty well. I cannot enter. I cannot enter. There's nothing here. Let's head back to a wall fire. Shut Ooh. 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 Nice. Nice little ranged attack here. There's a note. Lead plate, alum aluminum shards. Ranged weapons. Equip and press 
triangle to use ranged weapons and inflict both standard damage and stun damage. Okay, that's nice. Um, can I, where can I do this? Where can I equip it? I mean, offhand. Serums, we don't have that. So our skills, ultimate we don't have. Ah, okay. There we go. Don't have any ammunition, but I... Can equip it at least. Okay. Good that I checked this one out. Multiple enemies outside. <clears throat> Enemy card. Press L3 to spot enemies around and display their cards. Some enemies are more resistant of, to certain types of damage. There are four types of resistance. Melee, blood, melee range, blood, shadow. Orange indicates a medium resistance. Red indicates a high resistance. Okay, so this one is the brawler is stronger against ranged attacks. So we want to Steady attack boys, him. We've got one of them. Oh, it's one of those big... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, boy. I don't know if I can block. Oof. That hurt. Shotgun shells. We have another gunner. So they have high resistance against ranged. I don't know, and maybe you can tell me that in the comments below, if the range resistance also uh, includes my blood spear attack. Maybe actually it tells me. Let me see. Uh, medium ranged. Doesn't tell me, I think whether or not I like their screams when you burn them alive it ain't human ouch weapons ready oh that dodge was good oh i want to switch Fight him! Some bloody blood! Ooh! Rats and hideouts. Yep. I learned that I can eat some rats. Look around. There's something. Bullets. Can I change my... Ah, there we go. So I could switch to the firearm, but... I don't think I need that right now. Stay with a steak. Use lu Lupara. What's that? Kind of looks like a shotgun of sorts. Let Lupara, yeah. Ranged weapon. Detail. Does it say which magazine to? It doesn't tell me. Um, what ammunition it uses. Up here. He 
be strong against melee. There's one right below me. Ooh, there was, there was something. Collectible. New practices, new tactics. I know that some of our companions consider that the best advantage we have in our fight against leeches is that they can't go out during the day. Thus, we can hunt them down when they hide, powerless in their sleep. This is a rookie mistake. First, because vampires are clever and they have countless ruses and tricks to avoid being spotted in their den. Second, because they deploy many deadly traps to kill any intruders in what they consider their most precious precious sanctuary. It would cost us too much men and too much time to explore and eradicate vampires in their hideouts. The best tactic is to follow and destroy them when they really are vulnerable, when they hunt, when they hunt at night. It is much easier to attack them then for they can easily be spotted that's why the guard of priven must evolve and deploy new tactics to hunt leeches small and mobile patrols tactics based on technology adva advantages modern communications we can learn many things from the war in france new strategy new equipment and new weaponry grenades white phosphorus ultraviolet light bulletproof vests and flamethrower it's time for the guard to embrace the 20th century. From A New War by Geoffrey McCullum, Proven Leader. Interesting. No. It's locked. Oh, there's another hideout. Oh, that there was another guy here. Got him. Something here? Oh, I could have uh, walked around. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, there was something on the ground. Shillings. Oh, there's some someone on the ground. Some parts for crafting. No, is there anything I can craft at this point? Weapon now. You have enough components to improve one of your weapons. Okay. You can upgrade your weapon to a new level with the required ingredients. It will inflict more damage and you will also gain access to customization slots. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, and then I could go either this or this next. Interesting. That's cool. That's our stash. Let's save. Rest. Can we can we level up something? I don't think so. No. Let's continue. North Dock. Fresh blood. The whole building reeks of it. The scent is so strong it makes me dizzy. Oof. Yeah, that does not look nice. Also not very subtle. Music. Real like it. Ooh, what's this? Ooh. 
200 weapons. A group of 200 weapon press uh, trying to use a special ability. The sides, for instance, can be used to parry an incoming attack. Well, that sounds good. Can I do this? This place reeks of bloodshed. You're my last and dearest friend. This okay. creature is bedeviled. I must put it down. Uh, oh, it's William Bishop. Oh boy. Oh, he's afraid of the fire. Oh, and no, he was. Okay. Oh, there is the parry. Ah, wanted to jump. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, I, I pressed the parry, but it didn't work. Okay. I probably can only carry his normal attacks. Use bludgeon. Oh, that's another weapon. Melee weapon. Wooden stick reinforced. Now oh, that might be good for... Instead of this one. Just upgraded that one, but... No. Okay. Can we loot him? Jeez. Stop. Okay, buddy. William was an honorable man. I could have saved him. Mr. Hampton, are you in there? We knew him well, another lost soul, a kindred spirit. Sir, listen to the sound of my voice. I am... I'm a doctor. You're suffering from shock. Uh -oh. I must return to my flock. They'll stray without me. <sighs> Remember, certain scowls are every bit as resistant as we are. Who are you? Scowls? What do you mean by scowl? You truly are a newborn. I should have realized... Wait. You, you are the woman from the bar. Are you... like me? Can you help me? I believe, sir, I already have. I mean, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, remember, wooden stake to the heart. By George and the Saints, you've solved the mystery of these terrible murders. Patience, good fellows, I've come to offer help. Just give me a moment to secure my boat. We can leave this awful place. William was not the evil man they claimed. He was just taken by the thirst. He needed his drink. This man requires medical attention. We'll see he gets to the nearest hospital. No, please, I almost tend to my fault. My flock needs me. Yes, go with a good Dr. Swansea. He's resourceful, and I'm sure he'll take good care of you. You'd best come as well. The sun is soon to rise, and you'll need a place to rest. I just need a moment. If I can learn something about what has happened to William, I'll be a step closer to understanding what happened to me. True. Let's look around. This poor creature can't be my maker. Blood sample. Blood sample of William Bishop. A fresh sample of William Bishop's blood in a small... Could it be some subspecies of vampire? Maybe, I right? I must find a place to analyze the blood. Be because, like, this wild, aggressive nature <laughs> seems to be something new, right? That's what we read about the transformation of the woman in uh, our first hideout as well. That she turned slowly and then got aggressive. And it wasn't like... Like, that didn't play, like, our transformation into a vampire when we woke up. And yeah, we were obviously hungry and killed our sister. But it wasn't, like, with a blind fit of rage. Like, 
Qué bien peso. Dawn we row. Where are we headed? We're on our way to the Pembroke Hospital. It's just across the canal. They'll have a bed for poor Mr. Hampton. William was... What manner of creature was he? Predator, prey, villain, and victim. Who can say? The important thing is that he's been stopped. Duly noted. And the woman? What... Who is she? What woman? No, don't play me for a fool. You used me to locate that... Skull, you must know who she is. And I thought you were a gentleman. You shouldn't talk about a lady behind her back, but I will tell you she values her privacy. Hmm. Bet she does. Were London as peaceful as she appears from the middle of the canal? If only that were the reality of the situation. To be honest, I've always tried to avoid this part of town. Pembroke Hospital is the last bastion between the rest of London and the epidemic. The flu has decimated the East End, and the war still rages. Welcome to the front lines of a plague. This is where you work, Dr. Swansea. I am the administrator of Pembroke Hospital. I thought you were here in service of your mysterious order, the Brotherhood of... Of St. Paul's Stowe, yes. But first and foremost, I'm a man of science. A physician, like yourself, Dr. How, Reed. How do you know who I am? No need for modesty. You are Dr. Jonathan Reed. A surgeon of some caliber and renown, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct, sir. I knew it! I had my suspicions. But when you took the blood sample from the corpse of poor William, I was certain. Dr. Reed. Marvelous. Okay, so... Have we met? We're on, I we're attended three known of your seminars community. before the war. I have the utmost admiration for your research. <laughs> and what a turn of fate. England's most esteemed blood specialist returns to London a vampire. That is quite ironic. wonder if that it's a coincidence. Again, Maybe the from a so -called vampire who science. turned I us actually did that on the purpose. Of science is to refute myth, but when myth walks Maybe it's one of those cases where the that, of Saint Paul whoever that vampire is wanted to us study. to put us There's on the so trail of the to skulls to of that, investigate. Because they knew that we are an expert in blood. Well, then let me be blood. Join my staff at Pembroke Hospital. As a physician. I suspect you'll not find a better post of employment to contemplate your uh, predicament. This is sudden. I was returning home to see my sickly mother. But alas, that was before contracting this... Affliction. Dr. Reed, take a moment to consider. The post would be for the night shift, providing a good explanation for your absence during daylight hours. You'll be adequately reimbursed and have a place to hide. I even had the forethought to bring some clean clothes. That does sound like a pretty good deal so, for us, considering our situation. It seems I have little choice. But yeah. yours is a generous offer, so I thank you. Brilliant! Oh, Jonathan, this is one for the book, and the beginning of a beautiful friendship. It was so much easier to find a job in the early, uh, early 20th century. Apparently. <laughs> At least when you're a vampire. I wonder if we return to that area though, because there were so many locked doors and there was this locked chest underneath, uh, uh, or in this little sewer part. Dr. Swansea, thank goodness. I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane, for I bring good news. Oh, Doctor, what a night. We lost two more patients. Nurse Scow said she couldn't take it anymore and resigned. Yes, well, I'll make a new rotor in the morning. 
In the meantime, find a good bed for Mr. Hampton. Be sure to pay attention to his needs. Of course, Doctor. Oh, and Dorothy? Yes, Doctor? Dr. Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King and Country and will be joining us here at Pembroke. That's a sweet very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his that we got her. and one so experienced in blood transfusions. That is good news indeed, Doctor. <laughs> oh, yes. So is she aware of the whole vampire here business? At Pembroke, or? it's not what we have, but what we haven't. It's only thanks to Nurse Crane and the staff that our ship doesn't sink. If you have any questions, just ask her. Duly noted. Thank you. Your Rick. assistance is required, Dr. Swansea, immediately. Welcome aboard, Jonathan. We'll catch up after my rounds. Coming, Nurse Crane. I'm coming. Okay. That is a sweet coat. I have to say, fashion-wise, that is impeccable. Right? Okay. Healthy. May you talk to them? It's okay, Jonathan. I'll see you later. Okay. Come on, you bastard! You can do better than that. on there. Nah, it's my turn. Whoa! Whoa! What's right happening? Each heart contains the seeds of life. Drink at this river. Try it all. Oh, come on, you bastard. I won't bite. Sir, please. You've lost too much blood. Calm yourself. What's going on? You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you ass. Uh, be more polite. Insulting a good Samaritan. Not exactly the way to get rescued. All right, all right, sorry. I am in pain here. My guts are spilling out onto the street and you're yabbering on. Yes, that's a very nasty wound you've got there. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor, Dr. Jonathan Reed. <sighs> Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. Blood quality. The blood quality indicates how much XP you will obtain from a particular citizen. The higher the blood quality, the more XP you get. To drink blood of your prey, you first need to mesmerize them to lead them out of sight from others. Your mesmerized level must be equal or higher than the citizen's resistance. Mesmerize. Okay, so we, this fading light so we got the, the shadows. Dances with him the dance of life and death. Press extra brace, clay cocks, or circuit to release. A racing table will provide a massive XP boost, but be aware that there will be consequences. Learning more about citizens and collecting their hints will increase. Okay. I will not embrace him right now. No more. We'll not try tonight. to. Not like this. I will not take another life. Exactly. I I feel like our character would first want to know more about the whole vampire thing before he just randomly embraces someone. It is wise for the huntsman to sometimes let his prey go, but no famished hunter can run for long. Checking if there's anything else. Okay, so we let him go. Did I black out? I think so. Don't drink as much. Okay. Interesting. So that is uh, how that works. I was wondering about that before, uh, because before we learned about kind of their, their traits that we can learn about them but I didn't know how we would embrace them game taught us that 
Hey, that's the hospital. No time for self Who are you? Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he Thank really? You. It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised, but I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. Is that so? He is convinced it is the future. Um, tell me about your life in London. Okay, so we have mesmerized one. It would take five for her. He's healthy. Okay, interesting. Uh, what is the situation here? How are things here? Not good, to say the least. Let's get familiar We're with the nurses and the staff. struggling against an invisible enemy, more lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Doctor. Invisible enemy? An invisible enemy. Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here, and we're trying to hold fast, but... How do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. Yeah, that must be very tough. Can you tell me more about I'm the staff? I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Well, you can still do it. Anything that stands Is out? Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Okay. Got some hints on Tibbity Tibbets. Cochran is exhausting. Cock oh, Cocker and Tibbets. Dr. Cocker and Tibbets. Uh, and refuses to stop working. Interesting. Ooh, yeah. So, at. Dr. Edgar Swansea is... And we have Clay Cox here. Cochran, Tippett, Gwyneth Brannigan. I see. Speak up! Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I don't like I when games conduct, have such a contrast between the, the end, dialogue that you choose best. and then how they um, actually verbalize that like i assumed here that since we don't have an option that he wouldn't just say speak up or be that rude but it's like why do that and like not uh, please elaborate or, or something along those lines that seems a little more that's a little closer to what he would actually say okay we need hints for that i really like the hidden system though goodbye nurse it really you encourages this. you to talk to the people, find out more about them. I wonder, I mean, I'm sure, but uh, what other benefits other than the possible embrace it has to get the hints and learn more about them. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't happens. think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. Oh, we know. I was okay. assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. About your life in London. So we need hints here. 
Oh, this one is uh, unlocked because we know about him being exhausted. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. Uh, well, people are more important. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. Okay. Can you tell me more about the staff? What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But okay. <laughs> during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Positive characters? Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. It's convinced that Gwyneth Branigan is overqualified as a nurse. Hey, they seem to maybe be into each other. I'll go even further. If she were... Okay. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. I see. Any opinion about the management? I so I assume... Agree with Dr. I'm not sure about reserve. this, but I assume... But I must admit, he does during all he that time, women are not allowed to be doctors? Ah, yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Makes sense. Well, you're exhausting. You're exhausting you. yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Uh, Nurse Branigan is worried. Nurse Branigan is worried about you, Doctor. <laughs> she should not have told you that. I will have a word with her. You don't have to blame her for her honesty. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Branigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. I thought so. That is why I picked that. Um, I had a sense that he may listen to her, if anything. Okay, nothing else Goodbye, here. Dr. Tippett. Interesting, though. Where, where is Nurse Brennigan? She walked past us. Here we have unknown people. I not want to make wait, Doctor. I have patients to attend. Okay. Patients here. Okay. There's a free now. The music is beautiful. Okay, before I go that way, I don't want to go too far away from the hospital. Doctor, where have you been? I've little time to play hide and seek with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. Okay. I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He requires urgent medical attention. Already making the rounds? That's the Pembroke spirit. I'll ask our porter, Milton, to bring him back immediately. That's good. Thank you, nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. I have a few I would questions. Like to ask a few questions first. How is Mr. Hampton? And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. Can you tell me more about Dr. Swansea? What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. 
he knows me more than I know him. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. Oh, a little shade there. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. Okay. That's if you could again? point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. Thank you. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Okay. There was something on the... There. Hospital full. Due to the influenza, his, this hospital can no longer take any patients. Okay. Is that Milton? I think was the name. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. Yeah. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what and you're I'm talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Oh, okay. So, how's the situation? How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything, and it's getting worse every day. Okay, great. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance driver since... too long, I guess. I'll bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. How's the sanitary situation? Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. Right. It sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing here. I escaped through the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left okay. an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want. But be careful, Doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. Okay, that sounds like a side quest. So you're smuggling weapons? Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know. And by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, Doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. Okay. I guess that's one way to do it. Nothing here. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Let's have a look. Uh, okay. Oh, that is by Milton's shotgun. Okay. Some parts. Okay. Well, good to know, though. Even though I may not make use of it right now. Under the backyard garden. Could be another skull, right? What's the hat sign mean? Okay, that is just a marker for side quest. Doctor, last vials. Don't have any healing yet. Is that? No. Hey, you're an unknown to me. Good evening, nurse. Good evening, doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. 
My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. Nothing there. From three. Tell me about the situation. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Get a grip! <laughs> uh, I'm sure it won't be as harsh, but <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Get a grip! You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. Get a grip! Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you, but what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? Well, you've been a nurse for how long? How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. Well... You would be surprised. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. Fair enough. So how's the How staff is the coping? Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual. Especially concerning doctors. Why is Milton so grumpy? Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Okay. Milton, Milton's reputation is mediocre amongst colleagues. Why especially the practitioners? Why does Milton dislike doctors? I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned. Milton is not the chatty type. Okay. Maybe we have to talk to him again. Uh, nothing here. Available. Goodbye, Nas Hawkins. Um, there's. Uh, I wanted to talk to Gwyneth Brennigan again. Brennigan. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Probably a personal question. There. Why does Dr. Tippett's claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett's does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't. Okay, fair enough. It's good. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Okay. Milton is back here, so might as well talk to him. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Always. Uh, b -b -b mediocre reputation. Why do you have such a mediocre reputation among your colleagues, Milton? Fuck them. Nobody knows the horrors I've seen since working here. This city was sick long before the epidemic, Dr. Reed. I know it's a difficult task, but correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not the job you are paid to do? I've seen babies left to die while their brothers were properly fed. Underage girls and boys sold to all manner of perverts. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. We lack words. So excuse me if I don't look on the bright side of life. Fair enough. That definitely can change. Goodbye, again. Milton. Okay. Uh, and again, is now here. Okay, let's move slowly surely into the hospital boat building we get to our office it's city you life safe by efficient medical aid is a blow 
struck at the uh, of the flu pandemic. Volunteers make the difference. Call for volunteers. Dr. Swansea is right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research. Tippets. That's an unknown doctor. Let's talk to him. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau, Thoreau, Thoreau Strickland. Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Hi. Tell me about yourself. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose that career? What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Um... I'll be glad to help you. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. Tell me about your I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical. Okay. Not been successful yet. That is a little alarming. You may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me. But I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. Yeah, but not at all costs, buddy. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supply okay. seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Okay. A bit of investigation. There, yeah, personal. About your blood transfusion technique. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Okay. Tell me, Mr. Fiddick's Tell story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Okay. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior. A man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes, and fears. That's a good fears. approach. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones, and flesh. Okay, I like to hear that. I was a little bit worried when I heard about the experiment. Goodbye, but Dr. Strickland. 
I mean, it uh, seems to have uh, his heart in the right place. Someone? Who are you? I will not let you down, my boy. Oh, that's Dorothy Crane. We have here. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Pain? How painful is your throat? How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. Okay. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. Okay. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Oh, so that is now a um, press medical checkup. Do I have any? don't have any medicine, but I can't. I will see you later. Okay, that's good to I know, though. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. If I get some, I, I can go to... Oh, who's that? Good Let's evening, madam. First. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of oh. Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Well, tell me about... life. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer, and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Okay. Are you that rich? I'm really that rich. Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes. Thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. Okay. What are you doing in your life? May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Any complaints about your reception What here? do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Okay. Tell me about your right. Tell me more about your Tell me more. At Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. Okay, Pippa. She charged you. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. Okay. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. I'm just trying to help. Don't need to bark back at me here. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Okay, Pippa Hawkins. Getting some money. I'm so sweet. Good. Will this shift Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. 
Okay, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Philip. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Makes sense. So, doctors are arguing about your case? Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Okay. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Hey. Any personal questions we can ask? Why well, feel guilty about your injury? Yes. Tell me about your Tell injury. Tell me! Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. Your wife died because of you? How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Jesus. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Can I ask about... Tell me more of... about the death of your wife, Harvey. Yeah. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. Are your children all right? How are your children? after losing their mother. They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Well, that is a tough situation. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. I just needed words to calm the children, Ellen. As for Still me, have to meet what? Dr. Aykroyd. I can't get to the cupboard. That may be Dr. Aykroyd. It's another one of those posters. Oops. Stuck on a bucket. Crumpled letter. Dear love, I finally found the missing money for the fee asked by the ambulance driver to bring you to the hospital. Don't worry about nothing now except getting better for I took care of everything. I asked some of our neighbors, and they told me that this Mr. Hooks is something of an honest crook. He may ask for extra money in, charge, in exchange for a bet, but the bet is then guaranteed. I'm sorry I refused to pay for us. I realize now that the important thing is for you to get better soon. The Pembroke Hospital is a good place, I heard, despite the bad behavior of this uh, Milton Hooks. I promise you that everything is okay now. I'll see you in a... It's, I see you in your clear, clean bed as soon as possible. Interesting. So it seems like Milton and Pippa may take extra money from patients for 
for beds and ambulance services. Which I do not approve of. We'll have to talk to them. It's locked, all right. It's locked, all right. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Always a pleasure to meet a colleague, sir. Especially when he was supposedly dead. A colleague? Are you a doctor, too? Not anymore, sir. I used to be Dr. Rakesh Chadana. Now, I'm just Mr. Chadana, pawnbroker and humble guardian of this morgue. What do you mean, you used to be a doctor? Was your license revoked? No, sir. It is just that I like to be precise. I run a little pawn shop while taking care of the dead. But I used to be a real doctor. Okay. Not afraid of the dead? Are you afraid or uneasy being surrounded by so many corpses? Why should I? These bodies are empty vessels. Flesh left to decay. Poof. No soul anymore. All gone. Okay, most people fear that flesh. An interesting point of view. And quite an exotic one, too. Most people fear, or at least have a respect, for dead flesh. Sir, as a medic during the war, I learned to face my death and the death of others. It's the pain we have to tame, not death itself. Okay, interesting. How did you get this job? After I left the army, I worked as an undertaker down by the docks. A dangerous place with many an unpleasant business there. Milton Hooks helped me get a job here. Oh, interesting. Have we met before? Have we met before? I don't think so, sir. Why? When we first talked, you said you were glad to meet me since I was reported dead. A funny story, sir. Your sister came here a few nights ago. You were missing. Oh. And she was looking for your body. She must be very relieved now. I don't think so. Do you work here alone? Yes, very easy work, sir. All I have to do is watch a few bodies. The situation was very different when the main morgue was still open. Why watch the bodies? Why do you have to watch these bodies? Because these poor fellows have no names. We keep them in case someone comes looking for the missing. Sadly, very rarely happens. Why close the morgue? Why close the hospital's main morgue? It was for sanitary reasons after the beginning of the epidemic. Cadavers had to be moved to the nearest mass grave. Okay. Oh, let's see. You are a pawnbroker? A pawnbroker. I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. Who comes here to trade? Who comes here to trade with you? It's very unhygienic, even unsafe. Diseases can spread. For the customers, for the hospital. I'm very cautious, sir. I've been a doctor, remember. And all my clients are good people. In fact, I think I only know good people. What kind of goods? With the quarantine, it's not always easy to buy things. So I trade. I exchange. Some people sell, some others buy. I like to help. Okay. So you believe in life after death? Since you're not afraid of dying, do you believe in life after death, Rakesh? No. I believe we must do all the good we can while alive. For our time is short and the obstacles are endless. Do you think you would enjoy immortality as a concept? I don't think so. Don't mistake me. I love life, and I'd like to live a long life. But everything has to decay, sir. Even goodwill. Okay. Goodwill won't last? Do you really believe goodwill cannot last? As I said, sir, everything decays. If I was to never die, goodness, I would be bored or worse. And I like to be helpful, sir. Quite depressing, wouldn't you say? Yes, but the good news is we'll all die before losing our humanity, sir. Well, not all of us. So you're ready to die? No, I am not. I don't fear death, for I won't see it. What troubles me is the pain my death will inflict to those I know. You're a wise man, Mr. Chidana. 
No, Dr. Reed, I am a foolish man. But I like to think otherwise. <laughs> okay. Let's see what you Please have. Show me what you have to sell. Of course. It's just trinkets and curios, really. But I'm sure they can be useful. Uh codeine. Opium. An enigmatic formula. This formula written on a piece of paper seems complex and needs to be analyzed. Seventy shillings. Interesting. Um could be recycled. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's worth uh, selling. Maybe you can let me know in the comments below if it makes sense to sell these or uh, if it's better to recycle them. So let's. Uh, is that. Pippa Hawkins. We have to talk. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Uh, where, where is something personal? Oh, so I guess we just talked Goodbye, to Milton nice about the whole paying for bets situation. The pain. It's there again. Good evening, Miss. I'm oh, Dr. She Reed, looks terrible. The new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Okay. Do you require my services, Miss Howcroft? I have no need for your medicine, Dr. Reed. Blood is the only drug I need. But the question is, is she really a vampire or is she kind of like, she thinks that she's a vampire? And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this she hollow looks shell of flesh. So, describe how you feel. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. Ever heard of Cotard syndrome? I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, oh, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Oh, I can grasp it pretty good. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Your enemies? Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. Okay. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. Of course you are. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Of course not. Okay, we have a side quest. So who are you really? Who are you really, Miss Huckrow? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? I see. Okay, I guess. 
That's it for now with her. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Time has lost its effect on me, but the suffering continues. Definitely good at playing along. Um, okay. So many people to talk to. I think I want to go first to my room and we will talk to the other ones. Next chance we get. Let's beeline it very quickly. We're picking up some things. Ooh. Hacksaw. We'll investigate the hospital more very soon. We wanted to get to my room. It's first. locked. This must be the place. It's okay, definitely so. away from prying eyes. This is our Relegated hideout. Relegated to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. That's good. What's this? Article on Econs. It is a rare opportunity and almost a privilege to approach a vampire to observe their most in intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the most fascinating abilities I've personally observed over the last 10 years while interviewing a few vampires or econ or econ as the they prefer to call themselves. Supernatural speed. A vampire can act and move like a model in all his actions, but the trained eye will spot that they have the keenest senses and can react quicker than any mortal. On a few occasions, alarm, surprise, necessity to flee. I have seen a vampire move so quickly it is almost as if he had vanished just to reappear somewhere else. The human eye cannot follow their movement when they act so quickly, but it is not a teleport or dematerialization. It is only a supernatural speed. For me, it is cat-like attribute, which allows them to run, dodge, or jump longer and faster than us. I also noticed that such speed seems to exhaust them, and they are, are bound to physical limitation. Mesmerism. One of the most powerful abilities of a vampire can deploy can deploy is the capacity to force a mortal to obey them. I call this trait mesmerism, but it is nothing to do with the mortal ability to alter a subject's mental state. A vampire can bend a mortal to their will, and they can even break a mind. A vampire I interviewed even told me the more a subject tries to resist, the more permanent the damage will be, as if the vampire could literally fracture their target's psyche. The same vampire explained to me that these, this ability requires time to master, and that the result could vary Quietly from one subject to another. Implant a false memory, erase a painful one. The possibilities are endless and frightening. Blood awareness. This may be the most catastrophic ability of all concerning vampires, since it is the cause of so many tragedies for them and us. Vampires crave for blood. They must use their will to restrain themselves from frenzy frenziedly drinking every drop of blood they can see they need blood to function and to express their full supernatural traits a famished vampire can be very weak even if he cannot die of hunger or thirst this urge this need for blood may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it a vampire confessed to me that blood could sometimes blind him since its smell and attractiveness can be so strong when he focuses a vampire can almost see blood all around them inside warm bodies through walls on a supposedly clean weapon etc the same vampire even told me that he can see if a mortal has clean blood or is ill and that in some cases he can even sense diseases infected clothes or even items in a room if this is true it could have so many medical application it almost beggar belief interesting a little bit more aluminum powder and some shillings Okay, that is where we investigate the vial, I would say. I would assume that is our stash. Let's level up first. Uh, so I could upgrade my body, blood capacity, blood thirst. I could upgrade. I could defensive coagulation. You will block your target's blood in their veins, making them defenseless. You create a, an invisible barrier, absorbing direct damage until 
it fades or destroys. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Let's go with Blood Barrier. The following night. And I think this is a good time to end today's episode. Next time we will analyze William Bishop's blood. We will explore the hospital a little bit more, talk to the remaining people and uh, do all that. We have a few side quests already. I'm sure that the analysis of the blood will also lead us to more um, after that so thank you all for watching today's episode of vampire if you enjoyed it please give the video a like maybe consider subscribing to the channel share the video with friends family and the people on the internet that all helps me out a whole bunch and will bring you more content in the future and if you want to support the channel even more you can check out the patreon link down below and also the discord link where you can chat with us on a daily basis over on my discord i will be back with vampire very soon until next time have a great time bye bye